Hey guys, so uh, today I just want to make a video about running dogs. Uh, I get asked a lot of questions and get a mixed bag of responses when it comes to um, people inquiring about what we do um, talk about running dogs. Um, a lot of people think it's like greyhound racing, uh, a, lot of people, uh, a lot of people just think it's amazing want to know more, some have some welfare issues and so on. Um, so it's really difficult to try and get over to someone in a few sentences what it's all about, um, how it couldn't be more or le sorry, how it couldn't be less like greyhound racing, um, and how it couldn't be more purely beneficial for the dogs um, in the most part. Um, so I thought the best way to get that across would be a video about how we actually go about doing it. Now you see, you'll see videos uh, with stuff from events and races, and they're all well and good, but that's the that's not what I want to say the bad side of it, but it's the it's the point that everyone gets most competitive. Everyone's guilty of it. I try not to be competitive, but you can't help a little bit when you spend all your life training and then get a chance to show off what you and your dogs can do, I guess. Um, or not, in my case, a lot of the time. But, um, yeah, so I thought taking you along on a training run might really help to just get a feel for what's happening and what it's all about. Uh, and then if you've got any questions, hit them down in the comments below and we'll answer those accordingly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, just give you a bit of frame of reference, it's now 7am uh, on a fairly chilly September morning. Um, we're running today specifically because we've not done anything for a couple of days and it's going to heat up again uh, tomorrow and over the weekend. Um, it's currently five and a half degrees, uh, we've got six to do this, which for some of you will be totally normal, for some of you you'll think, what are you doing with your life, why would you get up at six o'clock if you didn't need to? Um, and yeah, I get that, I'm not a morning person at all. You'll only get me out of bed to do something like this. Um, so, here we have it, we're driving through Nottingham. We left the house at about quarter to seven. Um, so yeah, we left the house at about quarter to seven. Uh, we've got about another half hour or so on our journey up to Sherwood Forest, which is where our training ground is. Um, I should point out now that Sherwood Forest is not a free-for-all when it comes to dog sports. Um, there's a lot of things you and your dog can do in Sherwood Forest without any um, kind of without giving it any second thought. However, uh, dog kind of this kind of um, dog sport level is uh, is permitted. Um, there's always some debate about what the permit actually means, whether the permit's just for parking, whether the permit's for access and usage, or whether it's whether it's required depending on the number of dogs you've got or not. I'm not going to comment on it. I'm going to say that we run a low number of dogs at a time, um, and still think a permit is a good thing. It means you're insured as well, because you have to have insurance in order to get the permit. Um, they're not, they don't come together, by the way, you have to source your insurance separately, which will be the topic of another video entirely, um, because that is a big, big problem area. Um, but yeah, you, you know, if you're insured and you've got the permit, then uh, should anything bad happen, um, you are at least seen to have been attempting to go about things the right way. Um, if you cause an incident with another member of the public and you're not insured and permitted, then you're opening yourself up to some problems later on, I think. But everyone has their own opinion, you're entitled to yours, that's just mine. We're going to pick this back up as we uh, get close to the forest so you can see what happens uh, and so on. So just enjoy a bit of footage of the road on the way there. Okay, so here we are at the gate. Let's get out and open it, drive through, pop our permit in the window. Look at that, there you go, permit. Right, 
Let's get up to the parking spot as you can see. It's absolutely freezing today. And as you can probably hear, the dogs are excited. So, let's get on with it. Now, when I got out, I heard quite a few other dogs, so it sounds like the other people are here, which means we might struggle to film a little bit because we get a little touchy when cameras come out around dogs. I don't know why. Um, I guess it's like parents and kids, I'm not sure. Um, I guess it's more they, they don't understand why. And we've got this up now because I've got here because Nano is singing his heart out. Sing it, baby! <laughs> Okay, so now we're just going for a little walk before uh, we start running and getting prepped. Um, parked up there, as you can see, with the other vans. Uh, got all three dogs out together, walking belt. Um, and yeah, just time to make them go to the toilet. Um, so we don't have to do it when we're on the run. Just stopping and picking stuff up on the run is not fun. Um, so two of them being, just wait for another one. Um, a couple of friends have just turned up as well, um, so I'm going to make the nature of this, filming this a bit slower. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, tune back in when we're out going out. And we're off. Okay, I've had to switch to voiceover for this bit because uh, apparently the windproof GoPro case that I used is a bit too windproof and although I was speaking quite loudly through the duration of this run, or at least in snippets, it wasn't quite enough the audio to get across so here we are so we we'll speed up a bit and here's uh, an interesting one I don't know if you can see it but there is a squirrel getting chased that's pretty standard behavior when huskies or gun dogs are involved they, they just like to chase anything okay, slowing this down now just so you can have a look at our setup uh, just to be clear what we're doing this is an exercise called uh, bike jaw or bike jaw uh, and in that practice it's typically done with one dog or two on safer courses uh, this would be perfectly fine for two dogs and just at the minute I'm training for one dog event so it makes sense to take them all out singularly uh, so I'm sat on a, uh, a regular mountain bike we'll do full uh, spec um, a kind of a bike check and spec chat in another video but just assume for now it's a good standard mountain bike hydraulic disc brakes that sort of thing that's what you really need. Grippy off-road tyres um, and then we get onto the um, fairly specific stuff um, like what you see in front of you being the, uh, the, the white coloured implement that is referred to as a, as a bike jaw arm um, and what that's doing is just holding the line which is attached underneath the stem of the bike to the dog um, it's stopping that from dropping in the wheel should the dog unexpectedly slow down and then the line sags. You'll see, if you ask on Facebook groups and forums about, you know, what's the best one to get? Are these things even necessary? A lot of people say yes, a lot of people say no. Um, all I'm going to say is that I've had an uh, accident as a result of the line dropping into the front wheel and that was with a bike jaw arm attached. Uh, it was a bit of a freak accident, granted, but even so, I still wouldn't go out without one again, uh, just for that reason. I was about to speed the video up here slightly, however, coming around this corner here and into this fast downhill straight towards the bottom uh, is the location where uh, the aforementioned accident took place and as you can see there's nothing odd about this piece of track other than that it's quite quick um, it was on a different bike you can see there's the line touched the tire there just a little bit and uh, it was, this was ha this occurred on a on a fat bike with much wider tires and slightly grippier tires and it actually pulled the line into the wheel, brought it to a complete halt, throwing me down the road to somewhere around here. Uh, fortunately, uh, it was with Saskia, with this dog. Um, fortunately, she was absolutely fine, nothing hit her. I hit the floor in several places and then the bike hit me. Um, so it was quite unfortunate, but there we go. Right, now this is about the halfway point on the course and we've already been on here for quite a while. So what I'm gonna do is fast forward to the end and we can see the other guys in action. And 
and Nanok is go. Okay, so run number two. This is Nanok. He's our youngest dog. He's probably our uh, strongest runner uh, in terms of power. That was a brilliant uh, right left flick just there. He thought we were going one way and then the other and then changed his mind and we were going the original way. Um, so he's not the strongest dog overall and he's not the quickest dog overall. He is um, some, he is the absolute point in the middle and for some tracks having a bit of both is brilliant but to be honest most of the time uh, one or the other wins out and having a bit of both isn't ideal. So something a bit different on this run. What we're doing here is actually we're actually in draft behind two other runners. There's a two dog rig team at the front and a one dog scooter team in the middle with those being one dog bike at the back. This wasn't organized as such. I went out behind them knowing that they would probably get a bit of a tow off the start. I wasn't expecting to stay with them quite as well as we did, but this is really helpful for Nanook actually because one of the things that we struggle with with Nanook is that he um, really wants to impress and go really fast and he does tries really, really, really hard uh, for the at the start and ends up tiring himself out for the remainder so normally we do a mile ex you know, unbelievably quickly and then the following one to two miles however far we're running ends up being a bit of a slog and he's tired and then I get tired and so on so this is what this is really doing is helping him pace um, I'm not having to pedal much at all um, in this one because he's got the drive of the chase in front it is slowing us down a bit but as I say it's all good experience for him and it also means he might learn that actually as you'll see later on that he gets to run hard at the end if he doesn't at the start hopefully something that will uh, get ingrained within him and he'll be able to use later on when he's out on his own At this point in the run, the one dog scooter has taken an early leave of the track to do a shorter loop and gone to the right. Obviously, that was a bit of a distraction and we wanted to continue to follow them. However, the two dog rig team is at the front and they are probably, from what we saw earlier, likely the quicker team. So we're going to try and chase them down and see if we can stay with them the whole way around. <laughs> It's time for the two dog rig team to go their separate ways. We're going to go take a banker left here almost straight on uh, for a longer route where we're going to go keep to the right and follow the fire road all the way back up. That uh, branch off went much smoother than the last time. Could be a few reasons for that. One is that this is the normal way we go, so that banked right turn is something he uh, Nanook considers more natural. Uh, the other thing is that I could tell from the position of the rig that that was the approach they were going to take um, and had plenty of time to instruct Nanook that we weren't to follow them and we were taking our own corner. So now he's free to do what he wants which um, he hasn't been had really had the chance to other than a few brief moments where we've been catching up to the other teams. Now this is going uphill, so naturally a lot slower generally than the rest of the trail, although it is quite hard packed which helps. But as you can see he's already opening out quite a bit in order to expel that energy that he's had left from reserving it on the way out. Now it's Kimmy's turn and this time we are purposely following someone out. Kimmy is the dog we've had the longest, he's not the eldest, but he is the uh, longest standing member of Howling Yetis. And he's also the least inclined to run. But don't be fooled by what you're seeing on screen right now. He is definitely a creature comfort dog compared to the other two which um, I'm much more interested in working in harness. Some people s would argue that if he doesn't want to run, why make him? Uh, we don't make him. Every time we go for a run, he comes with us, and every time he gets hooked up, and if he wants to run, he runs, and if he wants to walk or trot or whatever, he goes. Um, he's not averse to exercising, he just doesn't like to push himself that much. But what he does like to do is chase other teams. So when given the opportunity, like we had today, 
we're going to let him uh, do what he wants, do what he wants, and hopefully that will result in uh, some improved exercise for him. On this trip, we noticed we took a slightly different turn out of the start. This trail used to be our regular, and this is brilliant up to. Um, this point pretty much at which there was a lot of deforestation that occurred last year and the bogs created as a result have never quite rectified. In front of us we're chasing down a, a two dog rig team again. Having three wheels has helped. <laughs> they said it was difficult when they got back and they've got three wheels. We're on two and with a dog that's somewhat less enthused when the going gets tough. Uh, so we really did struggle down this bit as you'll see when we fast forward. So that's it, we're all done. Uh, going home now to feed the dogs. Uh, they're all tired and happy and uh, we've had a pretty good morning to be honest. Uh, just hit 10 degrees outside so we've finished it off at just the right time and uh, that's everything. If you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll uh, address those in another video. Cheers!